Well, for more on all this, let's bring in Tyler Goodspeed. He's former acting chair of the Council of Economic Advisors and John Najarian, co-founder of Market Rebellion. Gentlemen, good to see you. Uh, Tyler, first to you, the, the first big pop in inflation, as we remember during the Biden administration, I think was, was mainly a result of energy inflation because of what the Biden administration was doing, canceling the pipeline on the first day, the XL pipeline. Uh, doing other things to increase regulation and, and costs for oil and gas production. Could we be in for another kind of bump? I mean, we have come down. Inflation is still higher than it was when, when Biden got in office, about twice as high on an annual basis. But could, could it go even higher, go back to some of those levels that we saw a year ago as a result of what's happening with energy now? I think it's quite likely that it will go higher, not only because of the OPEC cuts, but also because we've had an, a, an atypically warm summer holiday season. So people have been driving more. And heading into the winter, Europe is going to have to refill the reserves that they drained last year. And so the problem is that when inflation gets above a certain level, about three, three and a half percent, then people really start to pay attention to things like food and energy, and they adjust their expectations up accordingly. So the fact that we've let inflation get out of hand this long, and this seriously means that when you have a shock like this, people take notice, and, yeah. and inflation can ratchet up again. Now, John, markets were pretty happy for the first half of the day uh, with, with what happened with the jobs report. It was a ba basically a favorable re report. But with these energy costs up, uh, I think they began to wonder whether inflation would become an issue again and whether the Fed perhaps will push rates up again. What do you think? I think the Fed will keep pushing rates up. Um, that's an unfortunate thing, but I believe it's what they think they have to do. And, uh, you know, they, they end up, you know, pushing too far one way or the other, whether they hold rates down or take them higher. Uh, and the fact that inflation's coming back to bite as well, that is something that is going to be bad, obviously, politically, uh, but it's also really bad for Joe's and Jane's um, mm. because the last time we had sustained oil prices over 82, um, when you get that, you end up having the refiners moving prices up dramatically. Right now, we're about 418, I think, nationwide average. We're mm. probably heading back to 460, 470. Oof. And that's going to be something that people definitely notice. That's what truckers notice as well. And now with yellow filing for bankruptcy this week, it's just one more thing, David, yeah. that's going to move prices up for the consumer. And Tyler, you know, the jobs wasn't all good news. I should mention that, first of all, there were revisions to May and June uh, in, in those numbers, 49,000 fewer jobs for those two months. Uh, that, that was not good news. And then you also had the kind of jobs that were growing. I mean, all jobs are, are good and we're happy about uh, new jobs, but they were in health care and social assistance and education. These are, these are areas that are heavily influenced uh, by government money infusion, right? And, and in fact, manufacturing, I think they had 5,000 new jobs in, in manufacturing, which is pretty, pretty puny. Yeah, so the, the headline jobs number came in as a bit of a disappointment. And then, as you said, there were those large downward revisions to prior months. The one good thing was that wage inflation jumped, but from an inflation perspective, that's not good because if infl if wage inflation is running at about five to five and a half percent, which we learned it is in the, the, the most recent job report, and that's up, and productivity is running at about one percent, then that is just not consistent with price inflation of 2%. So yeah. usually when the price of something goes up and the quantity of it goes down, that to me says that demand hasn't really cooled that much, right. but we are starting to see scarce supply. Well, the and other thing, the John, real... John, the other thing that, that happened was while, while the wages went up a little more than expected, uh, the, the average work week hours actually went down. That is to say, where people are working less, and getting paid more or more money for less work. That's not a good thing. That's inflationary. You bet it is. And the Fed pays close attention to that, David, just like you said. So in all likelihood, this is what they'll be talking about at Jackson Hole. And we know that they'd be talking tough going into that big meeting from the Kansas City Fed. They hosted, of course, up in Jackson Hole and so forth, San Francisco and Kansas City, I believe. But I think what we're likely to hear and see up until that meeting and then after that meeting 
because we don't have another scheduled Fed meeting until September, is tough talk how inflation's running hot, and that is not what politicians want to hear, um, except from one side where they say, yeah, see, it's those guys that are doing it, <laughs> right. pushing prices yeah. up. Um, and I think we're going to see more inflation and higher interest rates because of this. Well, Tyler, speaking of finger pointing, uh, we had the debt downgrade this week. And, you know, whether you think Fitch was right or wrong, uh, you still had immediately the Biden campaign coming out and actually blaming it on the Trump administration, even though they've been in power for two and a half years. They've spent an extra six trillion dollars, et cetera. Uh, do you think that'll last uh, the, the idea that it, this is all Trump's fault somehow? I, I personally was in the room for three years defending the credit rating of the United States federal government when the rating agencies would come to do their annual credit reviews. And not once during those three years did any of them downgrade the credit worthiness of the United States federal government. So now, two and a half years later, they quite rightfully, I think, given the fiscal blowout that we've seen over the past two and a half years, they quite rightly downgrade the fiscal outlook for the, the, the United States credit worthiness. Because we are now on an unsustainable debt path with the interest on the debt heading toward a trillion dollars, and I believe by 2027, it will actually surpass what we spend on defense. Yeah. So I think this was the right move in, in light of the fiscal blowout of the past two but and a half that, years. But that finger pointing by the Biden, <laughs> that's going to get that, that bottomless Pinocchio rating that the Washington Post gives out for the worst possible lie you can make in politics. Gentlemen, great to see you. Thank you for being here. Have a great weekend. Tyler Goodspeed and John Najarian, appreciate your help.